problem has been uh, dubbed over concentration and joining me now to talk about it is securities attorney John Lawrence Allen in New York City. John, welcome. Good to see you. Hi, Ted. Nice to see you. We're not talking about too much of an old game show here when we talk about over concentration. What do we mean? Well, you can have over concentration from having too much in one stock, 60, 70, 80% of your portfolio, but you can also have over concentration in a market sector. Lastly, you can also have over concentration in a product that is all your money in stock or all your money in junk bonds or all your money mm. in limited partnerships. Why does overconcentration increase the volatility of a portfolio? Because if you have a failure to diversify your portfolio across different product types or sectors of the market, even a small move in that one position, while it can make you lots of money, it can also cause you significant mm. losses. It's like having all your eggs in one basket and having that basket get, get depreciated. Is overconcentration ever appropriate for an investor? Well, you know, overconcentration can result from uh, a retired person getting their company stock, which they've been paying into for 30 years, or there could be a buyout of a company, or you could, you could get uh, stock from uh, the sale of a company. And in that instance, then obviously you've made a lot of money over the years with it, but then becomes the decision what do you do with this concentrated position how do you protect that uh, let's talk about stockbrokers here is it proper for a stockbroker to recommend that a customer over concentrate his or her portfolio into a specific stock or sector the only believe that would be appropriate is if the customer understands the risk involved in, in the concentration and that risk is in keeping with the goals and objectives of the customer and the customer is willing to assume that risk. In that case, then the customer is aware of the overconcentration and uh, the recommendation at that point could become suitable. And now we come uh, bring it home full circle here, which is what we're all about, uh, and that is what does a customer do if he or she has followed the recommendation of a broker to overconcentrate the portfolio and then taking a loss. Well, assuming the customer was unaware of the risk and assuming that the customer had an overconcentrated position uh, that was not in keeping with the goals and objectives, that in and of itself is a suitability violation. That brings in Securities and Exchange Act 10b-5, which is a fraud action, and a customer could recover for an overconcentrated position under 10b-5, uh, and that would require an arbitration claim and going after the brokerage company and the broker that made the recommendation. But if the broker, if the broker sits down with you and says, "Mr. Jones, I think that this is a, the utilities are beaten and battered down here. They're at all-time lows. I think this is the place for you to be. Put you all in the utilities, and then you lose your shirt even further." Was there some responsibility on your part to say, hey, wait a minute, I don't think I can handle that, or is that his responsibility as a professional to recognize your risk tolerance? Great question. A broker is required under Rule 405 of the New York Stock Exchange and 23101 of the NESD Code of Fair Practice to make a suitable recommendation based on reasonableness, knowing your goals, your objectives, your risk tolerance, your time horizon. Would anybody recommend a, a, an investor put 100% of their investment in any investment? But this is proper. sort of like a bartender has having the responsibility and knowing when to cut you off, right? Well, that's a, that's another issue, but it's similar, yes. But uh, if a broker makes a recommendation to buy bonds, even 100% concentration in bonds mm -hmm. carries a risk because what happens if the yeah. if interest rates rise and your bond portfolio falls? You have to have diversity to get normalized returns and, to, and reduce the risk of your portfolio. John, always good. Thank you for the primer on over-concentration. Our thanks to security attorney John Lawrence Allen, author of Investor Beware, How to Protect Your Money from Wall Street's Dirty Trick.